My name's Dale, and welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Really excited about this video. This is a Tool Talk episode. This will be episode two, and lost find number two. Behind me, you can see I've got boxes of tools that I just picked up. My friend Jeff called me up Saturday and said, hey Dale, I just bought a metal lathe that I need some help to pick it up, and I got a bunch of other stuff, and there's some other things that are for sale. Wonder if you want to come along, and it's like, yeah, twist my arm, Jeff. Of course I want to come along. When Jeff and I show up, we're trying to figure out how we're going to get everything he can get that he bought on his rig. He got an incredible rockin' Rockwell metal lathe. Probably the nicest machine I've ever seen. Really well tooled. He got a couple large rolling toolboxes, a Kennedy toolbox, packed with stuff. And I'll tell you, Jeff negotiated a fantastic deal. He got a Metal Tips and Tricks price, if you know what I mean. Well, I got a chance to get what was left over, and I went through boxes and boxes of stuff, and I just kept pulling stuff out, putting it aside, putting it aside, and just had a big pile of stuff, and then I negotiated a price. Well, behind me is what I got, and to be honest, I don't know what I purchased. Um, I probably know about 50% of it. I didn't dig to the bottom of each box, so I want to have you guys join me in the exploration of what I found. Shall we get to work? This guy was a gunsmith. He also worked at Delta Airlines, so you can imagine what we might find some great quality stuff. I know there's some great materials. And I honestly don't know. I know there's some tool steel in here. And when I get to that, that'll be the last thing you guys are just going to be going, oh my gosh. There may be tool steel throughout this whole collection, and I just don't know. This bar here actually looks like it's ground. Could be tool steel. As we all know, it's hard to tell what it is. I'm going to have to set certain things aside that I'm thinking are tool steel and try to do some sort of spark test, try to figure it out. But that'll be for another, another time. Just got a bunch of miscellaneous parts, tubing. And I'm going to start just going through it as quick as I can. Oh, here is a great one. Drill bits. Look at that. Is that beautiful? That's even glass. Very nice. Beautiful vintage pressure gauge. Nice. Now here's, so this guy built a lot of custom stuff for himself. And I honestly don't know what any of this stuff is. So if anybody has an idea, yeah, send, give me, put something in the description and see what it is. Here's just some fantastic base, spring-loaded, don't know. Now, remember, being a gunsmith, I'm unfamiliar with that type of projects or those type of projects. So this may be some sort of gunsmithing thing. They look homemade, but damn, they're nice. Here's something beautiful, a set of taps. And we're not talking just a set, we're talking you've got your plug tap, your bottoming tap, and your taper taps all set up, both fine and coarse. That is a great collection right there. Definitely worth the price of admission. Look at this gauge. The hand, the, uh, hand is missing, or it's not missing, it's fallen off. 
but it's still working. It's accurate to 10,007 inch. Very nice. Um, does look like it needs some work to it, but I think it's an easy repair. We'll see what happens on that a little later. Just some raw steel. Now, I don't know what these handles are to. Definitely some sort of uh, lathe parts in this box. So if anybody knows what these handles are to, let me know. Might be kind of cool to eBay them or somebody may need them. Here's a cross slide, another cross slide thread probably. Very nice. Some wrenches, miscellaneous stuff. Steel. Great handle. Might have a purpose for that. So the good stuff isn't up front. I'm just going through it as I see it. This is aluminum, steel, stainless steel. Gandrels, one a sixteenth, one and one eighth. Oh, wow. Hold on here. To a Colt OMT spring. Colt M springs. Let's see what we got. Well, I'll bet there's somebody out there that knows what these are and want them. Send me a note. I'm not sure what to do with all this stuff right now. Here's a foot switch for air. Uh, I think my friend Mike would like this one. Ah, some type of Clico. Here's a box of Clicos. Now, if you don't know what a Clico is, it is a clamping device for really thin materials like sheet metal, where you can have a series of holes, and if you need to take the sheet metal off and reform it and put it back on in the exact same place, that's what Clicos allow you to do. They allow you to go into a hole, clamp in and pull it, and hold that sheet metal back in the original place. And I think I have a few of them. I'm excited about that. I've been wanting a set of Clicos for a very, very long time. This here just looks like more scrap metal. It's ground. Gosh, it's going to be tough to figure out if this stuff is actually some sort of tool steel or not. Got some more copper or brass. Copper soft jaws. They're four inches by one inch by three quarter. So third time this year, for the third time this year, I've tried to buy some stuff and you get there and the guy, I get the exact same story and it's the story of Oh, you should have been here earlier. I had a stack of steel I just sent to the scrapyard. And here in Atlanta, you're only getting about one to two cents a pound for scrap metal now. And this guy took it to scrap and he was describing what was in there. And I finally had to say, Mark, please shut up. You're upsetting me. <laughs> it kills me to hear metal, great metal just being scrapped. So when he told me that story, I just grabbed every box I could that had any sort of scrap metal in it to make sure he didn't scrap it. And that was just part of the negotiation of getting stuff. Let's see what's in this one. Aluminum. Hmm. 
look at this. Got some nice little dowel pins here. I don't know if I have different sizes. Yeah. Now I don't have a good collection of dowel pins, so this this is really a great score for me. Yeah, excellent. So you can kind of see what's in there. Nice collection. Somebody started a sign bar. I don't know how he had it set up to work. I don't know if this is one or supposed to be two. I'm not sure what it is. Interesting project. Great selection of bushings. Always need that. Nice selection of round stock. Um, I'm going to bet they looked ground. I'm going to bet this is all drill rod. Okay, we got a couple drill chucks. I think this is, uh, yep, 34 Jacobs. This one here is a Jacobs number 30 with probably a number one Morse taper. Look at that, that goes down to zero. I'm gonna have to set this up special for something so I can use it for really small drill bits. That's a great discovery for me. We've got some uh, dies here. I actually have some of these. This is great. This one's missing its uh, dies, but that's okay. I'll figure something. I remember Jeff said he actually had some in his kit that he ended up buying. So there's quite a selection here. Lucky I have a handle that fits the larger ones. Don't have a handle for the square. And I think I remember seeing the handle for this one in there, and it's It's this nice smaller set. I think it probably goes up to about three eighths. Oh, here's another square. Wow, look at the size of that. Never even been used. Never even been used. Nice. Don't know what I'll do with it. It'll go into a trade pile, I'm sure. Here's a box. Yeah, this says oil hardening on it. I'm gonna bet some of this. This is, boy, it feels different. You know, this doesn't look like normal hot roll. Definitely look, doesn't look like uh, hot rolled. Doesn't look like cold roll. I'm gonna bet that that is tool steel. Oh my gosh. That'll be very cool. It's another part box with these sort of things in it. Again, don't even have a clue of what some of this stuff is. Here's some drill bushings. Don't know what, how many are in here or what set or sizes. Doesn't look like there's any repeats. Those two might be smaller. That'll be kind of nice. Every once in a while you need a drill bushing and to make one, well, it's not worth the time to just drill a couple of holes. But if you can already have some drill bushings and set something up, I think that's very cool. 
I ended up buying some files. Um, this isn't all of them, but let's take a look here. What I'm trying to also do on these boxes is just kind of discover some of those hidden little treasures. So, got some file cards, file cards. Just for the record, I know I am damaging files by pulling them out this way. But right now, that's really the best I can do. I'd like to actually do a video on how to sharpen files. And it's a very simple, very cool process. I checked the internet to see who's actually done a video on it. And I haven't seen any that I thought were done correctly. So I've got a lot of files I may need to sharpen really soon. But these are better than some of the files I already pre-owned, so that's why I bought them. When you have an opportunity to buy just a box of files, sometimes you just got to go with the flow and see what you get. One of the things I'm excited about is having handles. I know this will make some of the trolls really mad or really happy, whichever I'm, I'm not actually sure, because um, now they won't be able to complain about me not having handles on my files. Now this one guy, he actually sent me a note saying, I'm never going to watch your channel again because you didn't have a handle on your file when I was doing something on the lathe. What's funny is the video that he was watching and sent the note on, actually I had a handle on it and almost 99% of the time I do. Every once in a while I take a handle off as a joke. Some people don't appreciate my humor. Oh, here's something kind of fun. Look at this great old box. Full of hacksaw blades. That's kind of cool. I love hacksaws. For years, actually, I didn't even own anything but a hacksaw to cut metal. And I have learned to become really, really good with a hacksaw. And I'll do a video on that someday. Because once you guys learn how to use a hacksaw correctly, you find out that it will do a lot of work very quickly, very effectively. The stuff in here actually came out of a, like a Kennedy toolbox, the top box. It was actually a snap-on, really a beautiful, beautiful toolbox. I didn't want the toolbox. I just wanted the substance inside all the drawers. And I negotiated a deal for that and just bought what was inside. Don't know what those are. Maybe they're for Clecos. Placement springs for Clecos. Here's something I'm very, very excited about. I don't have any cutters like this. This is making me very happy. Some big heavy hacksaw blades. I'm going to bet these are for those power hacksaws. Maybe I'll be sending some of those over to our friend Adam. Let's see here. Okay, I like to see cutters that are in containers. If they're not, if they're thrown into a box like this, they're usually pretty dull and, well, kind of worthless. Not horrible. I have been working on doing a video for you guys on how to sharpen end mills. 
particularly the very end. And there's a special setup and rig that you can buy to put on your surface grinder. But it takes a lot of study to make it work. You have to study different angles and figure it out. And I'm trying to bring all that information down to something that's simpler to understand. So it's basically a one, two, three step for you guys. And it's going to be a great video. I hope you guys will enjoy it because I have got a lot of end mills that need to be sharpened. But now I have a lot of end mills that don't, which is kind of cool. So this is the number three Morris Taper Arbor with a number three Jacobs Taper. What I love about these packages, if you'll notice there's something that's not on them, it doesn't have any barcodes. Just kind of a fun little observation. How is that for a beautiful small jeweler saw? Oh, it even you know how a sword's supposed to be balanced in your hand? That thing is balanced just right. You can just feel how it needs to, to work. Very cool. Now, how many people can tell me what this is for? This is actually for a resistant welder, or some of us would call it a spot welder. These are the contact points. Very interesting. I have one, so that's why I know what it is. More bits, punches. Look at this. Talking about arbors, this is a 1 8 arbor. I'm going to bet if my eyes are calibrated correctly. We'll put that over. Here's a neat little item. And I noticed there's another one. I'm not sure if they're homemade. I'm speculating that they are, but I think they're brushes that you'd put on the end of a drill, spin, and these wires will go in and clean out the end of something and do a really good job. Basically, it's just a copper tube with some piano wire put in it and then crimped here at the end so the wires don't fa fall out. Now, this stuff here is just thrown in the bottom of it. Nice large tap handle and number seven, Greenfield. Look at that the pattern on that. That's beautiful. Remember those uh, taps that I had or the dies? I'll bet that's the handle for them. Can I get? There we go. That's going to be a match. Sharpening stones, nice. That is a, oh, it's a small hammer handle. Interesting. Was my face red? I did the instruction, I didn't read the instructions on the application. <laughs> I'll have to read that later, find out exactly what it's about. Wow, look at the inside of this box. Some sort of cigarette case. Beautiful. Nice little 12 inch ruler. I know it's called a scale. I just do that to bug people.
let's now move on to one of the boxes in the back. Remember how I said I'd bought some files and they were still in their boxes? Well, here is what I got. Uh, actually, this isn't files. These are hacks. Nope, no hacksaw blades. Should have been hacksaw blades. Handsaw, hacksaw blades. Maybe I didn't buy any files. Oh, good. Finally, some files. Oh, look at that there. It's a lathe file. You know it because of the stronger angle here. And there's a safety edge. There's no teeth on the side here. And that feels really nice. Oh, that's great to have. Look at this here. Looks like it should be more like a sword. And it's not. It is another lathe file. Oh, it feels sharp too. Great. Great, great, great. Files is thrown in a box. Well, just the way things happen sometimes. But boy, they still feel good. I'll end up taking these out a little bit later and separating them and getting them to a safe situation. I've got some grinding stones in here. Great. Uh, these won't fit, of course, my surface grinder, but what they will fit is my tool cutter grinder. There's a safety edge, plastic bag for something. So as you can see, I am well taken care of in the file department for the rest of my life. But you know what will happen? I'm going to still go to a swap meet and buy more files. I think i got a problem. I just love this box, a drill index box. And again, what's great about an old box like this, it doesn't have those USB codes, on, USB, USC, it doesn't have those barcodes on it. Here's a nice little index. This is for fractional sizes, just a small set. Here's a number gauge set. with taps. I've never seen that before. I think I'm going to have to do some research there. Beautiful. So drill bits here. Now what is interesting, these are also split point. It says cobalt drills. I wonder if these are all real cobalt drills. I hope they are. I'm going to push that aside. In the bottom of that box, it's just a bunch of stuff laying in the bottom. And I think what I'm going to do is save you guys some headaches, is I'm going to go through it off camera and just pull out the highlights. I'm seeing a lot of files in there, seeing a lot of small drill bits, so nothing really unique is jumping out at me yet. But I will say what's in the next box is what is really worth the price of admission. If I only bought that box for what I paid for everything, I would be happy. So let's go over and let me show you what's going on in there. So two of us, Jeff and I could not get that box lifted up and put in the back of my pickup truck. My pickup truck's at about this height. That's how much steel is in there. Now, steel is cool, but when it is tool steel, then you're an extremely happy camper. This is, I think, 
It's all oil hardening. I'll have to look it up exactly what it is, but it's probably all O1 steel. Look at some of this stuff. Genuine brown and sharp tool steel. My gosh. <laughs> this is a spectacular score. I think you guys will agree with me. I'm just blown away. This is probably what's sitting here. It's probably about what 10% of what's actually in the box. Look at that. I don't think I'm going to have to ever buy another piece of tool steel again. I've got so many different sizes, shapes. Here's half inch by one and a half. Wow. Oh, here's some air hardening. What I'm hoping is I'm going to be able to separate this out. You can see how this air hardening is a different color and shade than this oil hardening. I don't know how to tell the different types of steels and very few people do without some sort of special thing, but I probably will develop some sort of system to kind of get me into the ballpark. No matter what, I'm not turning down a great deal like this. Some large plate, 3 by 18. Wow. Quarter inch, quarter inch. <laughs> Half inch, six by 18. Well, I think I've got some work ahead of me to try to figure out everything that I collected on this project, or I should say project, collected from this gentleman. Mark gave me a fabulous deal on all of this stuff. So these treasures that you just got to see, you know, we dug into probably, I'd say we dug in a good 80% of what's here. There's probably a bunch of little fine small stuff in that box and still in the bottom of some of these that I got to look at. But this total package cost me $300. I know, pretty cool, isn't it? Just some of this tool steel alone would add up to that price really quick. So I am very grateful, very blessed that, you know, I got such a fantastic deal. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me some thumbs up. Also, leave me your comments. I want to see if you guys like this kind of stuff. I come across these deals every few months. I used to come across them a lot more often, but I don't have the time to go look for them like I used to. And also, as always, Leave those great comments, positive, supportive comments. Until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.